Hi, everyone. Let's talk about that moment in trial where you're cross-examining a witness and you have that deposition transcript. You've got it highlighted. You've got it annotated. And you're waiting for that moment where the witness strays from his or her deposition testimony. And then it happens. And you want to impeach this witness. So what do you do? Hi, everyone. Dave Sugden of Evidence at Trial. We're talking about impeaching a witness with their prior deposition testimony. And it is this moment that lawyers, we get really excited about because it's that moment where we can show the jury this witness can't be trusted. This witness is telling two versions of events. It should be a moment of triumph and success. And yet too often it gets bungled. It becomes very tedious. It very, becomes very confusing. And the jury is left wondering what's happening exactly and when it's all said and done, they're thinking, what was that even about? And the reason why is a couple reasons. One, when we think about the textbooks and practice guides, they all tell us a certain way to impeach a witness with his or her prior deposition. And what we're gonna do is look at that conventional method today and we'll see why it doesn't work. And then I'll explain a simpler and much more effective way to really make that witness uncomfortable given the prior testimony and the jury understands exactly what happened. So first, what did the textbook say? Let's, let's assume the simplest hypothetical where in trial we have a witness and that witness testifies the light was green. And we know in deposition, the witness testified the light was red. So you have that testimony where the witness says the light was green and you have that moment and you know I can impeach this witness. And what do the textbooks say? What they essentially say is slow down and do this big wind up. And we've all seen these questions where it says, well, Mr. or Ms. Witness, you recall in this case providing a deposition. You recall coming to my office, taking an oath, swearing to tell the truth and you were specifically asked about the color of the light. Do you recall that? In fact, some of these textbooks suggest going to the witness and showing the deposition testimony. You'll often see lawyers asked to walk up to the witness and show the transcript to refresh the witness's recollection. And what happens with this big, long windup? A couple things. First, the jury starts to, it, you're creating distance between the key admission you want to impeach and the deposition testimony you're going to read. You have all these wind up questions. The jury has no idea what is going on. And by the time the deposition is read, they may not, e they may not even remember what the prior question was. The second thing and equally dangerous is you're giving the witness a ton of opportunities to escape. Because you have this key admission where the witness testifies in trial, the light was green. And then when you say you recall providing a deposition, the witness knows exactly what is happening. The witness knows, oh shoot, I must have said it was red. And so with all of these wind up questions, it gives the witness a chance to escape. And so you will ask something benign, like you recall providing a deposition and the witness may say, well, I recall a number of things in this case. I, I recall there were hearings. I recall there were several depositions. What are you talking about? You have to bring that witness back on track. And so with every wind up question, the witness can stray. And so by the time you get to that moment where you're reading the question where the witness says the light was red, it goes off as a thud. So how do we fix it? Very simple. When you get that testimony where you say, Mr. or Ms. Witness, what color was the light? And the witness says the light was green. Ask one question. And you say, Mr. or Ms. Witness, you've been asked about that before, correct? At this point, it doesn't matter what the witness says. All you're doing is setting up for the witness and telling the jury something important is coming. Something that is inconsistent with that witness's testimony is coming. The next is... You say, Your Honor, request to read from this witness's deposition testimony, whatever the page and line is. For example, page 10, lines 5 through 10. 
You then wait because opposing counsel is given a chance to object. And more often than not, the opposing counsel will take their time and it will be, it'll be silent in the courtroom. And that is okay because that silence builds tension and the jury thinks, what happens? What happens next? The objection will be overruled even if there is one, so long as you have good impeaching testimony. And so after the objection is overruled, the judge will say, okay, Mr. Sugden or Ms. Attorney, proceed. And you'll simply read the testimony. And it is, Mr. or Ms. Witness, what color was the light? The answer was red. There you have it. You have the trial testimony and the deposition testimony. And then what do you do next? You rub the witness's nose in it. And what you do is instead of asking those wind up questions on the front end, you ask it on the back end. And in every question, you remind the jury why you're doing it. And so you go back and you say, Mr. Witness, you testified a few moments ago, the light was green. Do you recall that? The witness has to say yes and say, and when you told us the light was green in front of the jury, you took an oath to tell the truth under penalty of perjury. You recall that? We all saw it. The witness says, yes. Then what you do is you explain to the jury what the deposition was. And you say, now, when I read that deposition testimony, where you testified the light was red, that was in a deposition in my office. You recall that? The witness has to say yes. And when you testified that the light was red, you had just like you had here, take it an oath to tell the truth, correct? He has to say yes. In fact, that oath provided you were saying the light was red under penalty of perjury, weren't you? And you just keep going. And so you then say, in fact, after that deposition was taken, you received a transcript. So you could review your testimony where you said under oath, the light was red, correct? Again, at this point, the fight's over. The witness knows you have him. And so you just keep going. The witness says, yes. And say, in fact, you were given the opportunity to change any of your testimony if you thought it was incorrect. Correct? The witness says, yes, you didn't do so, did you? Correct? And there you go. Much simpler. You don't give the witness time to try to escape the line of questioning. The jury knows exactly what is going on, and that is how you impeach with a deposition transcript. Folks, I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like, subscribe, check out our courses. This is a snapshot of the information you can receive at our Evidence at Trial courses. So please visit evidenceattrial.com. Thanks for watching.